We, we are now facing the Eliash Street to our right and the Jerusalem, I think it's called the Jerusalem Tower Hotel or I'm not sure, it's like an apartment hotel in, in the center of Jerusalem. Eliash is a, ahead of us, the direction that the bus just went and uh, that, that uh, is also Jerusalem Tower Migdala Ir, Migdala Ir, the city tower it's called. And here there's another construction site behind this wall. There is a very deep um, dig going on, not an archaeological dig, but actually digging a few floors down into the stone. The stone beneath us is limestone. Most of Jerusalem is covered with, with lime, a hard white limestone, and the walls around us, the Jerusalem stone, are made from that uh, limestone the limestone that is carved from the ground below us. There are a few areas in Jerusalem, or very few areas in Jerusalem, that have a softer type of stone that is easier to dig in. The Mount of Olives happens to be one of those places, which is also a reason that it was chosen as a cemetery. The Mount of Olives uh, is uh, the largest Jewish cemetery that is actively being used from ancient times, from biblical times, Till today. Here we are on, uh, we're looking up on Rachov Agrippa's perspective. To uh, our left, we can see a building that is being preserved and expanded. And uh, in many uh, places in Jerusalem and in Tel Aviv, we can see the new type of construction that includes preser preserving the older buildings uh, and, and expanding them in such a way that it preserves the beauty of the old buildings, sometimes ancient buildings, and also allows for expansion for building uh, modern buildings uh, on their place. Often this is done by constructing uh, uh, molds to hold onto the outer shell of the building while the inner part is carved out and uh, foundations are laid to uh, construct a larger building in its place. And the end result is that the old building, uh, the front of the old building is preserved, but a larger building, more, uh, more floors are added on above uh, in the, the same type of fashion as the older building. So here we can see uh, buildings that uh, are about 100 years old or 80 years old, and there are two or three floors. Uh, and uh, when the city approves the expansion going up, they will probably uh, rule that the older buildings need to be preserved. We have turned on to King George Street, which is one of the places in central Jerusalem, if there's such a thing as downtown Jerusalem. That's where we are now. We're walking up King George Street, and as you can see, there are cafes and uh, different types of stores on, on either side of uh, the road. Uh, ahead of us, uh, we will, uh, we're, we're headed towards a place that is called Talitha Kumi, which is a, an, an older type of preservation of uh, some parts of a building that stood to the uh, right of us. Uh, and uh, when it was uh, removed, when the older building was removed in order to make room to build these large buildings, uh, a part of the roof, the decoration of the roof was uh, rebuilt and it's just, just ahead of us. You can see this uh, wall in front of us, the standalone wall and uh, like a little chimney. That's the Talitha Kumi, uh, which um, is, was, was preserved in order to uh, mark the place of a larger building that stood here that was actually an orphanage. The uh, German uh, Lutheran or orf orphanage that stood at this, uh, in this area. The, this, uh, the windows here are also part of the building. But uh, this is a different type of preservation uh, from of uh, what uh, is currently done where the outer shell of the building is, is preserved completely and a, a new part is uh, built in its place, uh, keeping the 
the uh, other part of the building, the front of the building, you know, the, the, the outer shell of the building. And here we can see the, uh, this is the Talith Akumi. You can see the clock has recently been restored, so the clock actually works. And at different places in Jerusalem, you can see these uh, signs that uh, have different types of um, virtual tours or tours that you can run yourself on a, an app, on a phone app, uh, or a game where you can uh, scan a barcode and uh, you can take part in some kind of activity that has been prepared by the tourism uh, agency of uh, Jerusalem. These red ambulances, these yellow ambulances in front of us are the blood mobile where people are encouraged to uh, donate dam, uh, blood. Blood in Hebrew is dam. Uh, and uh, I, am, uh, I would like to donate. I, I gave blood a few months ago and I, am, uh, I can uh, give again. But uh, clearly there are a lot of people who are waiting in line here and uh, I'm not going to wait now. I'll come back again when there is a, a shorter line and uh, give my part. The uh, square around us, the, the building that we passed, was once called the Mashbir. It was like a shopping center, a, like a, a, a kolbo. A, I'm trying to think of the, the word in English for the, the type of, uh, of store. Uh, and it moved to Kekar Tzion, but uh, people who remember still call this place the Mashbir, the Mashbir, the old Mashbir. And in front of us is uh, the Ben Yehuda. That colored bus is an information center for tourism, which sadly is not operating currently because of the because uh, the tourism has slowed down. So the, the bus isn't operating, and I look every time I pass by to see if they have uh, reopened. Sometimes I actually see someone there, a uh, tourism information center. And uh, do you see the, the store behind the bus? There's a, a, a store, and uh, they painted the walls and wrote the name of the streets on the top of the storefront. Ahead of us is the Ben Yehuda Open Mall, which is, and you can see this is Yehuda. Behind the, the blue sign is the Ben, Ben Yehuda. And the, the person's f picture on the wall is Eliezer Ben Yehuda, who the street was named for. Now we are headed on King George Street, going back towards Jaffa. There are a couple of restaurants here. This is a soup place. And ahead of us is a falafel place, which has been here for a very long time, since the 70s or 80s. It's a, a famous falafel place called Mo'oz, which actually has very good falafel. And uh, from time to time, I, I stop here for lunch. Uh, highly, rec highly recommended. No, no commercial there. I'm not being paid to say that. I actually enjoy their, their falafel. Let's uh, share some, uh, some thoughts. Why, why is Jerusalem so special? Why is Jerusalem special to you? I imagine that Jerusalem is special to you. Uh, if not, then why would you be watching this video? But feel free to go into the comment section and just write a little blurb about why you feel a special connection to this city. And think about how remarkable this is that so many people from so many different backgrounds all over the world, Jews, Christians, Muslims, and many other people, feel a special connection to this city, to the city of Jerusalem. And although the, the city that we consider Jerusalem today, uh, where we're walking around now, this is a, the area that we're in now, uh, is also called the West Jerusalem in the media and in political conversation. West Jerusalem. This is the, the modern Jerusalem. This is Jerusalem that was uh, built outside of the walls of the old city of Jerusalem.
if you are familiar with the old city of Jerusalem. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I've already uploaded uh, some videos walking around in the old city of Jerusalem. The old city is to the east uh, of where we are now. We are walking up to Jaffa Street. We are on King George, the corner of Jaffa. Uh, and if we turn right on Jaffa Street and walk down uh, all along Jaffa Street, we will reach the Jaffa Gate of the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, 140 years ago, the entire city of Jerusalem was only in the, within the walls of the old city. So this entire area was not populated, was not built up 160 years ago, 150 years ago. Uh, the, there are neighborhoods here just to the uh, just to the just to the right of us, there is a uh, Azrat Yisrael, and to the left of us there is Evan Yisrael. These are neighborhoods that were built about a hundred and thirty years ago, or one hundred and twenty years ago. They are some of the first neighborhoods that were built outside of the old city of Jerusalem, and at that time, when those people came from the old city of Jerusalem and bought lands here, it was, this area was actually the wilderness. It was the, the walls of the old city of Jerusalem and the gates which were closed at night protected the people who lived in the old city, protected them from, from bandits and uh, protected the city from wars, from invaders. It, to leave the old city which was the city of Jerusalem, and to come out here, just to the, the left of us, all of these buildings are part of Evan Yisrael, which was originally built as a courtyard community in the wilderness, outside, along the Jaffa Road. This road was the road from the Jaffa Gate, from the old city of Jerusalem, uh, the, to Jaffa. So it was the main connecting road from the city of Jerusalem to the port city of Jaffa but there were there was nothing here and those people who came uh, over a hundred years ago and purchased these lands and uh, started building these homes and communities they were the pioneers of, of a we could consider them the pioneers of modern Israel of a breaking out from the old city uh, and uh, and building and others followed them, many others followed them and built more neighborhoods and more neighborhoods and the population of Jerusalem grew and grew. So today, if you ask any person here in the street, where are you? They will say, where, what do you mean? We are in Jerusalem. But think about the fact that a little over a hundred years ago, this was the wilderness outside of Jerusalem. And again, why, why do people why do people so connect to this city? Why is this city so special for so many people? The, have you ever heard of the Jerusalem Syndrome? There is actually a, 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 a disease of the people who come to this city and they feel that they are fulfilling they, to an extreme a, a prophetic a mission. Uh, and you could uh, say that uh, that many people, maybe most people who have a connection to the city have a certain level of Jerusalem syndrome not to an extreme, not to a, a psychotic level but uh, be what, what is this connection? Where does it begin? I imagine that the, the, the special connection uh, to the city is a theological, emotional connection that begins with our King David uh, who uh, first came to set his throne in Jerusalem after he ruled over Judea for seven years in Hebron. And then he moved to the north to a more centralized city uh, that really has no special advantage uh, beyond that. It's not as if uh, the city has a, a, 
a, a strategic advantage or a any natural resources or any other reason for people to prefer the city above being the the capital that was chosen by by our King David. That's interesting. Now we we've passed by the light rain light train a number of times. I'm planning on a series of tours that will be connected to the right light train in Jerusalem. What I'm thinking of doing is having a urban tour which will be about two to three hours setting off at different stations, different train stations in Jerusalem. So people can meet us, they can access the site through public transportation by taking the train and from that station I was thinking at one point that we would all take the train together from one station to another but uh, I think that it's enough just to make a meeting point at one of the train stations at a set hour and then we will go out and walk around that neighborhood and learn about the the neighborhood and the sites and the interesting places that they that we can see there and uh, people those who have cars can park nearby and uh, those who uh, do not have a car can use the train and public transportation transportation so it should be very convenient to access this tour here we're at the train station at uh, Binyan Klal the Klal building and across the street from us is the Davidka the Klal building stands at the crossroads, the corner of Jaffa. We are on Jaffa Street. And just ahead of us is the Kiach Street. Kol Yisrael Chavirim. Kiach, Kol Yisrael Chavirim, is the name of the Allianz school that stood here. Allianz was a network of schools that was established by French Jews uh, in different places in France and the Middle East. And they built a school here at the end of the 19th century. And it was a very important school, but the school was taken down and the Binyan Kla, the Kla building, which is a shopping and commercial and business center, was built in its place. Now we're crossing over the Jaffa Road. Jaffa Road is only open to the train and uh, emergency traffic. And uh, this monument ahead of us that we're passing by is the Davidka. The Davidka was a type of uh, weapon that was used by the Jewish forces in Israel's War of Independence. It was a type of little cannon that made a lot of noise and uh, shot off a something like that didn't make wasn't very impressive, but the noise was very impressive, and uh, that was used to uh, scare the enemy. We are at the, the building, which is at the Davidka Square. There is a hostel here, a, a, um, like a, a hotel, like a, a budget-level hotel called the Abraham Hostel, which is a, a very interesting institution. I, again, I'm not, uh, this is not a paid advertisement, and I have no special relationship with the, this hostel, but it's an interesting place for backpackers and uh, economy uh, tourism you can stay it's clean it's uh, very well managed and uh, looks like a decent place but here we're back on Jaffa Street you can always tell when we have the the train ahead of us if we are in the center of town and and the train is passing by then uh, we're probably on uh, Jaffa Street uh, ja the train goes all along Jaffa Street from the old city, from Kekar Tzahal. Uh, Kekar Tzahal is, a, you can, it's between the walls of the old city um, and uh, the city hall. Uh, and the train turns off there going up Jaffa Street all the way to the central bus station, which is on the other side the western side of town and then it turns towards uh, Mount Herzl. Here we see the the Russian church. We're at the Russian compound, the Migrash Harusim. Uh, the building to our left is the police headquarters. 
that is in a building that is part of the Russian compound that was built by the the the, the Russian Empire, um, uh, Nikolai the first, uh, the king of uh, Russia built the uh, Russian compound as a hostel for uh, Russian pilgrims, Christians who came to the Holy Land. So th there's a church here and a little monastery. Uh, part of the, a, a large part of the compound was purchased by the state of Israel after the establishment of uh, the state. Uh, part of the buildings, the one to our uh, right, the building that we see now, uh, is a, a building that is used by the court by Israel's uh, justice system uh, still uh, and uh, part of it is still used by the, the Russian monastery so you can walk through the building and you can see judges and nuns walking around in the building which is interesting uh, and the, the Russian church ahead of us but uh, to our left you can see the prison, the Russian compound prison uh, that is still in use as a prison. The, the British converted this building into a prison during the British mandate, and uh, the Israeli police still use it f for that. And uh, in front of us, you can see huge construction going on in new buildings that are being built. I imagine that at some point, the Russian compound itself will be uh, built over with the preservation, preservation of uh, the old ancient buildings and uh, we spoke about that earlier in this uh, video so you can see there's a lot of construction going on in places that are available to build which is a uh, on the one hand it's a little annoying but uh, on the other hand it's a uh, beautiful to see how the city is uh, developing and uh, new hotels are being set up and uh, and some uh, old hotels as well. Here we see some graffiti we're passing by and uh, we will do spe special graffiti tours to learn about the artists and uh, the work they've done and uh, vandalism uh, that uh, is a phenomenon that we should uh, pay attention uh, to. And here as we look at the Russian compound uh, building that is now used as a prison we can see the Russian inscription and the, the symbols of uh, the building. And at many historical buildings in Jerusalem, we can see these blue signs with the golden uh, flower that uh, has a little description telling about the historical significance of uh, these uh, buildings. We can see the mix of the, the old and the new. The, this uh, building ahead of us has been returned to the Russian uh, government and uh, has been turned into a very nice uh, boutique hotel. What are your thoughts when we're walking around Jerusalem? Would you like to uh, share some? Send me a message. I look forward to hearing from you. If you are watching the video, I'd like to, uh, to hear back from you because I'd, I'd like some uh, feedback and to, to hear more from you, uh, what you are enjoying in my videos and any, um, uh, any suggestions will be greatly, greatly appreciated. We're walking down from uh, the uh, Russian compound, which is next to the city, city hall. And in front of us, we can see parts of the Mount of Olives, which is across the, the, the valley. We can't see the old city of Jerusalem, although it's in the same direction. It's a bit lower than uh, where we are. But we can see the, the Mount of Olives, and we can see these historical buildings around us. I'm not sure if this neighborhood, too, is considered part of Musrara. Earlier we, we did a, a video about Musrara, and we're actually walking towards Musrara now. 
which is a, a neighborhood and which was previously an Arab neighborhood. There are many large palaces in the, this neighborhood that were uh, vacated. The owners of the, these homes fled in Israel's War of Independence or before the war. And after the War of Independence, when this area came under the control of Israel, immigrants were settled in uh, these homes that were in a, a, a level of, a, although they're very beautiful buildings, they were neglected. And it became a slums type of neighborhood. The uh, Musrara, which is uh, ahead of us now, and um, so it's a, a strange, strange mix of a very, very beautiful uh, buildings of wealth that were inhabited by uh, immigrants, uh, refugees, uh, Jews who came from Arab countries uh, with nothing, and uh, people from these neighborhoods established the Israeli uh, social organization, social movement called the Black Panthers. I spoke about that a bit in the last video, and I intend, Be'ezra uh, Hashem, with God's help, to a uh, tour more in the Musrara neighborhood and learn more about the history and the, the story of uh, the people who lived here, uh, who established uh, this uh, social movement in the 1971, uh, before Israel's uh, the, the Yom Kippur War, the 1973 war, which kind of uh, brought an end to their, their social movement for other reasons. Uh, but it's a, a very interesting story, w very worth investigating, and uh, this is a very beautiful neighborhood worth uh, visiting. You can see now the mix of uh, modern uh, parks and uh, some uh, apartments that were built in the 60s and 70s, uh, along with uh, beautiful homes that were built in the the 30s, in the 1920s and 30s. Here we have entered the Musrara neighborhood. And now a lot of people who live in this area are either older residents or many Breslev Hasidim, ultra Orthodox. The, the Musrara neighborhood is right next to the Choma HaShlishit, which is next to Mesha Arim, and uh, this whole area the, is a very um, Haredi type of neighborhood, an ultra-Orthodox neighborhood. So again, it's a, an interesting uh, mix, and uh, Jerusalem has has uh, interest to in interest to offer to people from all all different. Uh, backgrounds and I guess that's one of the things that makes this city so special I asked earlier and uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on that why why is Jerusalem special to you and what part of Jerusalem is special to you so uh, feel free to uh, write in the comment section and share your thoughts on that I hope that you are enjoying the video and uh, I look forward to seeing you here with feet on the ground, in the Holy Land, and uh, let me know if you would like to uh, tour with me. I would be uh, glad to uh, do that with you on the ground. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a, a thumbs up, and watch more videos on my channel. Let your friends know. I hope that the, the videos are becoming more um, professional as, as we go on. I know that in order to uh, to make great videos, I guess that the path to make great videos is uh, making a lot of uh, not so great videos, but, uh, but that's all right. This is a learning experience for me, and uh, I appreciate you uh, being with me along along the path.